Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a video that I've been planning on doing for a little while now. We are, uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, we looked at a motor yacht called Motor Yacht Victorious. Um, she is a brand new and yet 14 year old super yacht that was just launched in 2021, debuted at the Monaco Yacht Show. And what we're gonna do is we've got the deck plan of this yacht, but it's a, it's a very interesting deck plan because it's fully colored in and it's all, like I said in the previous video, it's almost like an aerial view of the actual vessel rather than a black and white deck plan. Uh, it has some really nice uh, information in there. Uh, and it will give, and I'll, I'll give you some information about how the interior of the yacht works, things like that. All right guys, just a quick 60 seconds to tell you three reasons why you should be using NordVPN. Number one, security. If you're frequently using public Wi-Fi, such as at airports, at coffee shops, or in the office, then you should be using a VPN for increased security. Also, if you live in the UK, your service provider must log all your internet data for 12 months in case the government wants to look at it. Using NordVPN will make this impossible. Number two, did you know what's available to watch on Netflix in the UK is not the same as what is offered on Netflix in the US? One of my favorite TV shows is not even available in the UK version of Netflix. So I connect my VPN to the US and hey presto, I'm watching it. And number three, don't be the product. If you're thinking, hey, I have a free VPN and it's just as good, you're wrong. A free VPN will show adverts, plus they will log your activity and sell that data to ad companies. Anyone offering anything for free and you have to be asking, what is their business model? And let's put it this way, if you're not paying, you're not the customer, you're the product. NordVPN does not log and this has been independently audited. And on this Black Friday deal, go to the link on screen and get a two year plan plus one additional month free with a huge 73% discount. All right guys, back to the video. Okay, we got the deck plan open and the top of the deck plan, they always show profile view of the vessel. So we can see all of the decks. Normally they would have on the, on the right hand side here, they would have the decks listed, but they haven't done that here for whatever reason. All right, let's move into the uh, into the, uh, the the individual decks then. So here we've got. Um, I'll zoom in a bit. This is the top deck, the sun deck. As you can see, it says here sun deck, and this is what what they've called a gentleman's club. So I can go in any further. Yeah, I think that's as far as I can go. Oh no, there we go. So this is the gentleman's club. He's called it, and basically, uh, rather than having a sun deck, he decided he wanted another. Uh, inside deck now if you remember the if you watch the series on yogi the sink in the super yacht yogi uh, you'll remember that they added an extra deck to the top deck of that vessel and it made it top heavy and and they had to add um ballast to the keel of the hull now i don't know the detail i'm not suggesting that this is like that at all but what they've done is they've, this was meant to be an open deck and they've added more structure on top of the vessel um, so yeah, so that's always a bit, I'm always a bit weary about any vessel that's had a, an extra deck added because if it's not designed that way originally, then, um, you know, you have to take into consideration stability when, when you're doing things like this, but I'm sure they've, I'm sure uh, they've learned all the lessons from all of those kinds of incidents in the past. So in this, uh, in this area, we've got a day head here, which just means it's a toilet without a bedroom, you know, um, and then you've got a pantry here. This is for the crew to, so they can service this area. So whenever there's uh, guests in an area, there will be crew not far away, and and the pantry is somewhere where they can, you know, they can prepare things like cups cups of uh, hot drinks, and they can bring food up from the from the uh, the mess and stuff uh, from the galley and stuff like that. And then in here we've got you know lots of different seating areas, stuff like that, and. A f an actual working fireplace they have here and usually the way they do this is that they will have um a, it'll be a gas fire that looks like um a, an actual real fire and there'll be a, a, a screen in front to prevent any f naked flames from getting out into the room and then uh, they'll they'll use a, they'll have a gas system so they can uh, and then they'll have fire suppressant in there as well if they if they need it 
So we've got stairs here. And then here we've got a, a humidor or, or a cigar store. Uh, and this will be refrigerated, or that will be cool anyway. I, I don't know how cold exactly it is, but I've seen these on some vessels, and they are they're usually quite cold when you go in there. And then here we've got a sliding door. I don't know what kind of door that is, but they, they will slide open, so this will be a nice uh, nice access to the outside. And then you've got a few sun beds and a table. So that is the top deck. And uh, this is, like I said, this is the sun deck. So we'll go down to the bridge deck. All right, so we're on the bridge deck now. You can see outside here, we've got a walking area all the way around, which, which we, uh, we didn't have on the top deck. So this is the first deck that has an outside area that can, you can walk all the way around. And you can see there are doors that open out here to various, uh, go into various parts of the vessel. So we've got the wheelhouse here or the bridge. Um, and they've got a couple of seats here for the for the watchkeeper and the uh, captain or the uh, officer of the watch, should I say. And then you've got bridge wings on either side, doors going out so they can uh, when they're when they're on the bridge here and the captain is docking the vessel, he can transfer the controls from the main conning station here onto a bridge wing and then he can walk out and he can take control. And when he's standing here, he, he's got a line all the way down the vessel, front and back. All right, so this is pretty pretty standard anyway. There's the door going out here into a corridor here. This is still a crew area. You've got the captain's uh, office on the starboard side. So we'll have a desk in here and table and, you know, that kind of stuff. And on the other side, uh, you've got his cabin, which is nice because... On a lot of vessels I've been on, even vessels that are larger than this, the captain's office is often in his cabin. So it's not great for the captain in terms of, you know, uh, privacy and stuff like that. So he's got people coming in and out constantly. But in this, on this particular vessel, the captain has his own cabin, uh, separate from his office. So we've got a door here. We can see that the the uh, the floor here is different, and this is because the here he's entering into a guest area so you've got nicer floors and stuff like that now this uh, the owner of this vessel is a family man and this was obviously this was obviously designed based on his particular family and so on the on the port side here you've got the daughter's cabin it is a two berth cabin it's got a double bed in it but obviously it says daughter's cabin so she, i would imagine she's she's older and on the starboard side, you've got, it says twins cabins, which which seems to, I mean, it's a twin cabin, but the way it's written, I don't know whether that's lost in translation um, or it's saying that he's got twins and that's where they stay. But it's a twin cabin. And um, yeah, and, it's, and they're, obviously they're all en suite as well. So moving back into the next section, we've got here a working area, really. We've got the main stairs, the spiral staircase for the guests. And this, obviously, this is on every deck. And here we've got a crew door and then a crew staircase here and also leads out onto the deck. And then we've got the best part of the of the vessel in terms of the for the owner. This is the owner's cabin. And you can see it's a vast area. Unusually, uh, it's it's aft facing. Now, more often than not, the owner's cabin is either under the, the bridge deck on the deck below or it's usually forward facing and it's usually either above the bridge or below the bridge and this is this is often why the the owner's cabin is so often at the forward section of the vessel uh, this is one of the reasons why very often I, I talk about the bridge being on the wrong deck because here the bridge is on the correct deck right so so ordinarily you would have either up here is the owner's cabin or down here would be the owner's cabin um, or even down here, you, you sometimes have an owner's cabin, which is below. So, but what happens is, uh, very often is the, the, um, the owner wants this space here. So what they do is they put the bridge down here, which is not a good system because the, the, the they lose visibility here because they've got all of this in front of them before. So they can't see anything that's like a small vessel that passes in front of them. When they're down here, they can't see down here so well. So it's not really recommended, but that's what happens often because this is really good space to have on a vessel. But on this vessel, 
we have um, the master cabin um, facing stern, facing the stern of the vessel, which is quite interesting. So we've got a lovely bed here, huge thing. Um, and then here, most likely here, there's, it looks like a do there's a doorway here and a doorway here. And here there's a unit here, which would most likely have a television on a lift that comes out. And then you've got a, a giant walk-in dressing room here. And, uh, and then on the port side, you've got a giant bathroom. And like I said, you've got two um, doors here, sliding doors that go out onto this area here with a nice jacuzzi there and lots of seating and sunbeds and stuff like that. Uh, you can see here, we've got the um, the inflatable life rafts. I think this is, sh yeah, this is the deck that, they, that they're on. All right, so that's, uh, that's the bridge deck. All right, now we're on the upper deck and you can see the helicopter landing pad and it's got an 82 here, which is the D value. And this just basically tells us the size of helicopter that can land on the on the uh, the landing pad. This is this is not for us. This is for a helicopter pilot. When he's approaching, if he's never landed on this vessel before, he'll know the size of his helicopter, and he'll know that he is or not okay to land here. Then we've got this is the uh, this is for the anchors. So you obviously you've got an anchor on on each side, and this is all the equipment that lowers it and raises it. You can see there's a crane here, and I think this is a um, rescue vessel, and um, rescue boat, should I say. Here, this is I think this is coverage for a, 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 a an opening that goes under, so you can climb inside of the. Uh, you can go down to the to the deck below. Um, we'll we'll find out out in a minute. So we, you can see also here this with this being a working area. Usually they wouldn't have teak down on here, but because there's a landing pad, it means and they've got stairs here and here. So that means that when the guests arrive by helicopter, they walk down here. So they've they finished the, the, the working area of the vessel with a teak finish, which is normally they'd just leave it as steel, which is what's underneath. Um, so then you've got more more outside deck here. You obviously this is all teak, and then here you've got the forward lounge. It's very often called observation lounge because you know it's got it's it's got a great visibility around here. You can see it's got a baby grand piano in here, and uh, and then you can see. Well, I think there's a door here, but yeah, I I I think it's unlikely that they'd use this door um, because it's because obviously if you're if you're at sea and you open a door that's at the front, then you'll potentially get a lot of wind blowing through. So. They may use it, but I would imagine there's probably a door around here that they would use. Uh, you can see here you've got formal dining here, and and this vessel uh, they claim it claims on some websites that it can take twenty guests. I think when I counted all the cabins, I think I I counted enough for sixteen guests, but so I'm a little bit unsure about that one. So you've got formal dining here. I would say it's probably unlikely that this gets used very often. Like it said, it's formal dining, so. More often than not, they'll eat outside. And why not eh? if you're out in the Caribbean or you know, the Seychelles or something? So here we've got another lounge. So this is a bar. Um, and then you've got uh, a pantry over here, another pantry for the crew. And then again here, you've got the crew stairs. This is an elevator shaft. So this obviously goes all the way up and all the way down. And then you've got the guest stairs here. So that obviously you're going to see this on each deck. Uh, then we've got another day head, two day heads here. We've got one, an interior day head and an exterior day head. Just means that you can go into this day head from outside. You don't have to go, come in and traipse all the way through to get to your toilet here. That looks like another set of stairs. Not sure about that, why that is another set of stairs there. And then we've got uh, the aft salon with another bar here. Um, or a table, where, you know, some sort of bar. Maybe it's, uh you know, uh, for serving various different kinds of things, maybe a sushi bar or something like that, another table. And all of these areas will obviously be fully equipped with the, the AV system. So you'll have TVs, audio, you know, fantastic speakers, usually up in the deck head so you don't see them. And they'll be able to play music and stuff. And also what a yacht will generally have as well is it will have an ability to play music. So if you, let's say you're having a party, you can play one track all around the vessel. 
so you can play the same music so you don't have to go to each room and turn on the system to play music you can just play it all through the AV system we've got opening doors uh, sliding doors here you can see windows here and then we've got sliding doors that take you out onto the aft deck and then we've got uh, exterior dining. This is probably where they eat most of their meals just because, you know, why not? If you're in a nice place, you've got a great view and, um, you know, and you can sit out taking the nice weather and, uh, and the views and the food. So another table, another bar here. So you can hang out in your jacuzzi and you can have a crew member standing behind this bar, most likely serving drinks and stuff like that. So that was upper deck. So now we're on main deck. Now this is where the most of the guest cabins are. Now, like I said before, if I go back up to up to this deck here, I counted two man there, two there, two berth, should I say? Two berth there, two berth there, that's four, six, uh, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now that's all the cabins I found on, on this plan. So I think it's a 16 uh, berth um, vessel. There could possibly be some fold down bunks in some of these guest cabins. So that might be where the other, there might be a, a folding bed in these. I've seen these on other vessels. So I, it, it would usually show it on here, but it doesn't. Anyway, so all the way forward here, this is working area. And then here we've got the bathroom and this is the guest VIP cabin. Now, it's a curious place to have a cabin because it's right, it's right, uh, let's see, it's here. So if we go back over here, you can see that this cabin here, and, and right here you've got the anchor, anchor pockets. So the anchor pockets here, and the guest cabin is right here, VIP cabin. Now that's a very forward... That's very forward of the vessel. And when the vessel's at sea and it's pitching, meaning that the bow is rising up and then dropping down and hitting the the, water, the sea, uh, and it's doing that a lot, this is not a very good place to be. Okay, so we've got more guest cabins here. You can see the, the bathroom, very nice space, uh, two berth cabins with a couch, stuff like that. So that's nice. And then and more and more. So because obviously this was built as a charter vessel by the the uh, the eventual owner of this vessel is is uh, designed it to be a charter vessel. You got a guest corridor runs through the middle, and then again we've got our stairs, elevator shaft here, crew crew stairs. It says crew lobby and stairs. Uh, the main galley here, and then a galley. A galley lobby. I'm not sure what I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a preparation room or something. I don't know. Never really heard of that before. Inside, there's a nice big space. Well, it appears to be uh, looking at the size of this based on the size of the vessel. Uh, it appears to be a nice sized galley. It's also on the guest deck, which is unusual because usually a galley would be on the, on the crew deck. But yeah, every vessel is different. But in my experience, at least in the last few, in the last five, six years, the the galley's always been on the crew deck. But here we go, we've got one on the guest deck, which is actually a pretty decent spot, uh, because obviously if you're feeding the guests, you want to have it not too far away. So out here we've got the main lobby. Uh, this is a, I think this is an inside space with doors access on either side. Now here. We've got a cinema room and playing room, it says. Now, uh, I think the reason why they've put the kids in here or called it a playing room is because this room is soundproof. <laughs> We've got a small AC room here. This is a working area. And um, this will probably service this, this deck. There's probably one on each deck. Um, so, yeah, there's a big cinema in here. Um, like I said, soundproof. Uh, and, uh, yeah, why not, hey? Okay, outside here, you've got Kids Playground. That's quite interesting. You've got a room here that says Sea Toys Storage. So obviously this deck out here is where all the toys are. So you've probably got some skidoos somewhere. Um, not skidoos, um, sea doos and, um, and other things like that. Probably down on the deck below, actually. Now let's go out onto the deck here. We've got three vessels. Um, the, te the tender, this is a catamaran 
tender, 12 meter uh, catamaran tender. This is another tender here, uh, which is, a, I think it's a nine meter tender. Now this, interestingly, as I mentioned in the previous video, the, the vessel um, uh, is, is a similar design to the one, I, when I saw it at the Monaco Yacht Show, I, as soon as I saw this boat, I thought, oh, that looks like the boat on Andromeda, right? On uh, Ulysses Andromeda, they, uh, t they've got like a 21 meter, uh, 20, yeah, is it 21 meter? Yeah, 21 meter um, two deck catamaran tender. And uh, and this vessel has a 12 meter one. And, and it was designed by H2 Yacht Design, who, who did the interior for this vessel and the interior for Ulysses and Andromeda. So, uh, yeah, that, there's, I don't think that's uh, any surprise there. I don't know who built the vessel, this tender, but, I, but H2 Yacht Design designed it. Then we've got two cranes here. Obviously, this is a big boat. So the cranes here will be for putting this thing in the water and recovering it. All right, so the next deck down, we've got lower deck. So on the lower deck here, we're going into the crew areas now. So we can see working areas here. There's probably uh, access to the bow thruster in here, so you can go and work on it. Uh, and then you've got a, a door that leads in through into the crew area. Now, what is very impressive about this crew area here is if you've noticed, like this this cabin here, not not a good place to be. Like how close it is to the bow. It's so close to the bow that the 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 actual furniture in well for all the cabins up from here onwards they're all you can see that the, this little area here is affected by the shape of the bow so this is a i mean it's it's don't get me wrong it's fantastic to have your own cabin on a yacht it's very rare unless you're a captain or a chief engineer or uh, maybe a chief officer um it's very rare to have that so having your own cabin is uh, is bliss but at the same time, being so close to the bow, uh, when it's rough, uh, it's not so good. But I'll take I'll take it any day rather than sharing a cabin, which is here. It'd be nicer to be here, but you've got to share with somebody else. And they've got look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cabins, nine cabins uh, for single occupancy, which is fantastic. And there's another one over here, which we'll go to in a minute. That's a two berth cabin. Uh, but so they've got nine cabins here, ten there. Captain's cabin is eleven. So there's eleven cabins on here for crew that are single berth cabins. Now that is, I, I've never, I, I've never heard of a vessel that has so many in comparison to the size of the vessel. So there's this has a crew of twenty to twenty one, and yet there are eleven single berth cabins on board, which is fantastic. So you've got here a two berth cabin, and then there's another one here. And then there's two more over here. So that's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Captain is eighteen. Okay. So each one is obviously in ensuite bathroom. There's a garbage the garbage room is here. And then you've got this is probably a refrigerator unit in here. And and there's an access hatch here. And this is so you when the garbage uh, barge comes along, you can just chuck stuff out there. That's good. Um, so here you've got some shared crew cabins and then you've got this one here. It's a two berth cabin with a double bed in it. This is most likely, I'd be very surprised if this is not the chief engineer's cabin. Uh, the captain's cabin is up on the bridge and you've got this nice cabin here, most likely chief engineer. Also, it's very close to the, uh, engineering part of the vessel. Uh, so, yeah, moving back, we've got a switchboard room here and a HVAC room here. And then you've got a what's that? generator room here. Now, we've got this is the 2,000 square meter spa and uh, beach club. So that's an impressive space there, isn't it? This is obviously, you can see it's a charter vessel. Although there are plenty of vessels that are not charters that have this kind of space. But on a vessel of this size, to have such a large area... Uh, is uh, is quite unusual. So you've got your salon here, get your hair done. You've got another day head here. And then you've got a table here. I don't know, it says gym, but then there's a table there, but you can see there's gym equipment here. You've got these uh, shell doors that open out and they create this big 
outdoor area here so you can work out here and have a nice view out uh, if it's not so hot which is nice massage room here another day head over here and then you've got more beach club stuff another um, opening shell door here and then you've got your um, steam room over here and then this leads out onto this into this area here which is fantastic look at this pool and this is a um i think this is a contraflow pool and it and it can be filled with fresh water or salt water and then you've got the stern door here which obviously is in this position is opened flat so you again you've got more outdoor space okay so we are on the tank top and it's called the tank top it's because this is the last deck and it's on top of all the tanks so the, the, there is one more deck if you like one more level under this but this is the where all the tank space is so here you've got uh i'm not sure what this is actually a uh, working area maybe bow thruster room maybe uh storage also and um, you know like deck storage and stuff like that and then you've got cool, cool store here, so fridge, walk-in fridge, says there, plus three degrees, 11 and a half square meters. And you've got 11 and a half square meter freezer on this side. That's, uh, that's interesting. So what you have with the fridge and the freezer is you have like gas detectors in here. And you also have a an alarm on the door. So um, if the door is left open, for instance, uh, alarm will sound in the ECR to let the engineers know that someone's left the door open, there's a problem. There's also an alarm inside for if you get stuck inside and for whatever reason the handle doesn't work, you can press uh, an alarm and it will activate in the ECR again. And then we've got here, uh, this is unusual, this is below the water line now. So we've got the crew mess and lounge. So we've got a lounge area here, most likely be a TV on the wall. And then you've got the the tables here for the crew to have the lunch and the dinner and stuff like that uh and this is below the waterline which which is not the best because the crew spend a lot of time in the crew mess and i don't mean that they don't work i mean that when they're when they're especially when the guest is on, when there are guests on the crew often sit in the mess waiting f to be called you know because you, you there's a lot of sitting around when the guests are on board uh, until you until the vessel is moving or until the guests want to go ashore or something like that. So the the crew generally spend quite a bit of time in the crew mess, so it sucks really that they've got no portholes. Um, we've got a pantry here, um, and then we've got the laundry on the port side here, and you've got those stairs and the elevator shaft here for the main elevator, and and a deck head for the crew area, which is unusual. Um, I don't you don't see too many day heads for the crew HVAC room here and there's a door here and it leads into this area here and it, it says some stuff uh, it says electrical panel and stuff like that but there's a lot of space here and I suspect because it doesn't actually label but I suspect the ECR is in this space here um, then you've got the main engine room here you got your two engines and then remember at the beginning we talked about the uh the propellers here this is the this is the shaft coming in from outside and going straight into the gearbox here and then you've got your and your main engines here so that gives you a, a pretty decent look at uh at this vessel um so let me know what you think i hope you enjoyed this uh, look at this vessel i love the single cabins from all of those crew members uh, makes me want to go and work there anyway guys uh, i'm going to wrap up here because i've gone on long enough now put your comments or questions in the comment section and we'll talk about it there all right guys thanks very much for watching i uh, don't forget to like this video it's very important especially right now and and subscribe if you haven't already uh, that would be great all right guys i'll catch up with you next time